Well, uh, let's start things off with a thank you uh, for the wicked shirt. Not a problem. You're I appreciate welcome. it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, obviously, this merch is going to be on sale tonight for the show. It will be, yes. Um, chatting with the, uh, the folks from Rural Alberta Advantage. Uh, your new record, The Rise and the Fall, is yeah. out now. Yep. Uh, this latest single, Conductors. i got to ask, what is the deep Canadiana reference <laughs> that you're going for? There's, there's always some sort oh, of wow. like deep, tragically hip-esque <laughs> Canadiana reference that, uh, that is coming out of it. Oh, so wow. is, the, is I, there something? I don't know if there actually is in this one. I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think, trying to rack my brain if there's any sort of like little nugget. Because sometimes, sometimes it's just like a tiny little thing in there, but yeah, I don't know if there is on this one. It might be the rare. Non- well, one of the one of the rare few ones. It's the so. rare. No few. geography yeah. well, in this song. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's just we are. It's just from us. That's, okay. That's, that's Canadiana enough, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Just a, a message from a, a good Canadian band. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. so what is what is conductors for you then? What is what is this song uh, as a as a message to the people? What is it? Um, well, like to be perfectly honest, um, like I've, I've been kind of open about it with Paul and Amy in the past and, you know, anyone close to me that I love, I love being in a band. Nothing, nothing like makes me happier than like get in front of people. But the one thing that, you know, there's two components to that. You got to write the songs Mm -hmm. to be able to play them. And I think, you know, back in the day when, when, you know, we were younger and everything was brand new, I think things just came a lot a lot easier and quicker and you didn't sort of second guess yourself to a certain degree. Um, so yeah, like last year when we're sort of, we got half the record done, we're working on the second half um, and getting ready to record with Gavin last spring, I guess it was. Um, so it would have been the last time we passed through here in Calgary. Um, we're sort of talking about writing and you know, world's blowing up with chat GPT and Paul's like, man, look how easy it is. I need a computer to write a song for us. <laughs> and I think it's sort of, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of the lines in there are sort of, you know, like, you know, like, why is it that I just keep running away from something that, like, I do enjoy so much? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, as, as hard as writing can be, like, there is a part of my brain that once all the pieces sort of lock into place, there's just this amazing endorphin rush. It's kind of like making a puzzle. Okay. When you, when you get that piece, you're like, oh, man, I, I'm the one that came up with these, this connection of things and it's touching me in a way and it'll touch other people. Mm -hmm. So it's like that feeling is so amazing, but it's sometimes they're just few and far between and you got to like keep pushing towards it. So I think it's a lot of, you know, trying to question myself, like, why is it that I, I'm, I'm so afraid of finishing things off and writing and second guessing myself when I know it brings me so much joy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what, you know, some of the context of the song was sort of, being with it, within it being an explosive song with lots of excitement and stuff. Oh, of course, of course, and I like. I feel like this has got to be a message that that strikes home for anybody. You know, mm. a lot of life's most difficult challenges that you're going to face are the most rewarding. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. It's 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 putting, it's it's putting the work in. Get your hands dirty, and that's when you like. Then you can put your feet up. And you're like, oh man, this feels like a great day. I did something. Mm-hmm. You know. So in in touching on writing and obviously the the little. Canadiana tidbits as you guys are touring are you like you're always taking notes you're always like oh man people would love that reference people would like you know the the little deep cut things of Canadiana that you, you think people would would get or um uh, for me specifically it's it's uh it's like a tumbleweed in my brain okay so sort of like that it's slowly like collecting these things that sort of like pick up and you know some things they go back decades you know like we're um, when we were working on Lifetime, um, I was just I was working on some some lyrics with it, and I w- I flash back to when I was in high school, and my English teacher in high school. So that, not to date myself, this goes back <laughs> we more we than more, more than one decade those, at least. No specific years. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> but yeah, I remember my English teacher at the time, uh, Mr. Proctor Hartley, uh, basically summarizing the story from. Um, Sinclair, uh, he's a he's a prairie uh, right in the prairies. Wrote a short story about uh, it's called Lamp at Noon. Um, about it takes place in the dirty thirties and sort of um, you know this guy going out and his wife goes out for a walk and he's searching for it. I don't want to ruin the story, but anyway, I flash back to that her summarizing that and remembering like about like I asked her about it, dug up the story and I was like I read it. I'm like oh, it's good in my mind. What you summarized was a little bit more impactful. I, I recently, as we were writing 
read it again and found it a quite devastating uh, short story. So I recommend reading it, anyone who is interested. Okay. But a lot of the lines that I was coming up with, for some reason, flashed me back to that. Mm -hmm. um, that story, I don't know why, and it made me sort of like utilize that as a, as a sort of, you know, backdrop for S source the, the context. Yeah, yeah, source material for the story. So it's those things where I had not thought about that in quite a long time. But mm -hmm. you just sort of like, you pick up on these things mm -hmm. and memories that you have on the road. I think, you know, like for Three Sisters, when we were early on touring in 2010, um, we were driving in Northern Ontario. On our way, we are touring with uh, The Wooden Sky and Great Bloomers. We played a show here at the... It was upstairs. Oh, man. <laughs> no, no, no. It was like super tiny. Uh, Broken City? Oh, yeah. Broken City was upstairs? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we were playing Broken City. But anyway, we are in Northern Ontario. Um, a friend who was from Seuss, like uh, from Thunder Bay. Yeah, we're going through it in the winter. He's like, "Do not, do not go through the Sioux. It's winter. You never know what the snow is going to be like." Okay, go the other route. We're like, we went the other route, and we're driving in Northern Ontario, and it gets to the point where it's like just two lane highways the whole way. Yeah, and, and it's a trucking route. Yep. So we're driving along in our little caravan, and we crested a hill, and a passing lane had just ended, and. I look in front of us, and probably like 30 seconds away from us, we're staring head on into a semi. It was five seconds. It was like three seconds. It was and not 30. It was yeah, like yeah. Right it there. was, I don't know, like, for some reason, there happened to be a shoulder, enough of a shoulder that we could just ride on, and we kind of like scooted around it because a semi was passing a smaller car, and the smaller car was like, nuts to this. I'm not going to let, then I got to find a semi for the next, <laughs> yeah. to the next passing lane. We may have been the collateral damage, but anyway, it was a very quiet, very quiet right after that. Um, and I think that stuck with me for a super long time. And a lot of the sort of uh, lines within Three Sisters, mm -hmm. it's kind of about, you know, heading up to Thunder Bay, passing through the cap. Um, I don't want to drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, sort of, that sort of thing. So you, you collect these things, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Winter driving in any rural part of the country, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. there's there's definitely risks that are Terrifying. taken because you'll yeah. think, well, there's no, there's nobody around, you know, who's going to be passing sometimes. Yeah. It, it's, you know, and I, I like that, that, Amy, you were like, you're like, yeah, I remember this story well. I remember every last little detail of that. Hey. Yeah. It, well, it was terrifying. Like it was we, you know, I often think like we, I don't know how we survived you, you don't like to tell your parents and your friends like we almost died on the road <laughs> anyway bye we're going on tour again but but there are some scary moments that happen when you're touring it's 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 a rough uh rough way to live sometimes being on the road but um that's why i really like three sisters is my favorite song off the record because i think it it really captures that feeling it really captures a lot of memories that we have like in terms of journaling i just started this year finally writing things down just so i can not necessarily to use in anything but just for my own memories because mm -hmm. again touring like getting to come to calgary like we've been here so many times it's amazing but it happens so fast right we're like what was that where did we play mm -hmm. what was going on so it's, it's really nice to be able to try and preserve these memories so that we have them to look back on when you know when maybe we're not doing this anymore but hopefully mm -hmm. we'll still do this for a long time yeah, it's, it's it's special little memories. It's more than just dropping a like reference to the the Calgary Tower, mm -hmm. or the Big Blue Ring, or something like that. It's yeah. like it's like a real deep memory. Oh, sorry, that was really that uh, Calgary Tower, Big Blue Ring? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're we're working on the next record. We need this stuff. <laughs> uh, writing this stuff down. Yeah, the dusty old dome that's falling apart down Love the road it. there. Love it. Just yeah. hit me. I need this. I need this right now. <laughs> Chatting with Nils and Amy from Rural Alberta Advantage. Uh, I saw this uh, clip on your Instagram page uh, about a TV show that you guys were on. Um, how long ago was this <laughs> L.A. complex? Yeah, that was a show. I don't remember how long ago. Like 2012. 2012. Okay, okay. so 12. 2012. So it was, yeah, it was a show that was, uh, it aired in the States and in Canada, I think. And yeah, we were uh, asked to be a part of the show. It was a show about like young actors trying to make it in L.A. And they wanted like a house band to kind of be a part of the show. And so in season, I think we were in season two, um, we were asked to kind of be the house band for season two. And it was it was really fun to uh, kind of play. I think Departing had come out at that point. All the songs mm -hmm. that we played were, were from Departing. And so we, we got to play our music. We got to be watch crazy fights and beach parties and uh it was it was a lot of fun to, to do that yeah the scene i saw in particular was you guys were like you know playing along at a pool party all of a sudden yeah. this 
fight breaks out. <laughs> yeah. And you guys just, you, like, you had to play it cool through the scene, like, yeah, just watch I, it all go down. I remember when they were telling us, like, okay, act. Just act surprised and stuff. But you can tell they just use very wide shots of us because <laughs> we are not actors. And so I think we just, like, didn't do great. So I'm like, okay, just use the wide. Don't don't show their faces. Something or... that you guys would do again? Like, if somebody approached you said, hey, we need a band for a scene in a movie or a TV show, have you guys been approached about doing any, anything else since this uh, this show came out? I don't think so. No. It'd be fun. It, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I don't think we've been approached. <laughs> I wouldn't say no to it. It was it was an interesting sort of like it's it's interesting to see the sausage get made on the other side, you know. <laughs> so it was it was just interesting to like just be a part of it. And uh, uh, I will let you guys know too. Um, just you know, pump your tires a little bit here, but that show has a one hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. So, uh, a rare wow. a rare feat. All because I, of us. I, I wow. did. Sure. Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> of, course, of course, it's like the house bands. Spot on. One hundred percent on Rotten Nailed Tomatoes. It. So yeah, yeah. Everyone involved with it watched it. <laughs> and uh, chatting with uh, Rural Albert Advantage, you guys are playing a show here tonight in Calgary. Uh, I'm curious if you guys have uh, ever considered a name change or if hmm. there was ever another name that was on the table for you guys. Because uh, Sam sent me this yesterday. Your, uh, your, your press release, because he's going to be uh, shooting the show for you guys. Um, the name of the band that they had put was Rural Plural Advantage. Oh, wow. Ooh. Oh, the rural That's not plural bad. advantage. What do you so, mean? bit of bit of a rhyme <laughs> scheme there. Yeah, yeah you know, plural. it's it's better than you know some things I've heard <laughs> that have butchered our name. <laughs> um, have have you like was there ever anything else on the table for you guys, or like was it always like from the get go it it was rural Alberta advantage? Was there anything that like hit the cutting room floor? Or... No, it was I, always it was, it was pretty much it was pretty much that because when we when we started out, like, kind of like we had our roots in an open mic night. And Paul and Amy were playing in a band with a friend of mine, so they had their own thing. And you know, we, Amy's husband was in a sketch comedy troupe, and there was an after party, and they would have you know bands play there. Their band played. Um, they asked me to do it, and I was like, well, I, I know, I, I know some friends. We can get some songs together. We can do something. Uh, I got they, it, all they put was Nilf Edenhaus, so they got that <laughs> completely wrong. Nice. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> Um, but that, be <laughs> that being said, um, once once things started rolling and we're like, well, we're we should play shows, we should have a name. Um, that coincided really nicely with all these songs I was writing about Alberta. My brother sending me an email, and just within there, he just ended up. He was just relaying how he was hanging out in southern Alberta at our cabin, hanging out with some friends, and exploring the rural Alberta advantage. And everything just sort of like crystallized in that moment. And I feel like I just feverishly Googled, and I'm like, where where did he get this? Yeah. Like, is it something else? Because it's too perfect for me. And yeah, couldn't find it. So just, that was the only thing that we've ever been billed by. And uh, yeah, but, I but rushed out to uh, acquire a domain name as the RAA. That's right. But the <laughs> but the, fr the band that me and Paul were in tried to steal that name. He's like, hey, why don't why don't we just, we, why don't, remember? Do you remember? He was I, like, why don't we I, just I take think, that name? You're I think like, you, no, you guys, we're good. I think we're going to, I think we're going to keep I it. I think you guys told me that more recently. <laughs> and this, this, this guy's a, like a good, great friend of mine. Went to my wedding, um, showed up in a, a sleeveless tux. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just his vibe. But anyway, yeah, I, I think you guys only told me that recently that he, he, he was like, or, or did he did, did he want to call your album name? No, he wanted to. <laughs> he trade just straight names. take it. He okay, wanted to trade names. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you did. You did mention that like the name has been butchered before. <laughs> What's like the worst butchering of the name that you've oh. heard? Royal Alberta yeah, yeah, the the, uh, the Royal Alberta Adventure was one that we saw mm -hmm. on a sign. Mm -hmm. Honest, like that was yeah. printed somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like on, a, on a chalk sign. Okay. Like back in the day. Okay. Um, and we're like, yep, all right, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll be okay. <laughs> it is hard to say, like we know, but it's we've gone so far with it now. I kind of think oh, yeah. we're we, yeah. we, at this point. Oh yeah, there's just there's there's practice. no yeah there's practice no going back yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. There's 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 too many good Canadiana tracks yeah. that have been released under obviously this moniker to yeah. to to veer into anything else now. Um, I run a segment on my show regularly. Uh, I'm going to do this tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Um, it's called Dirty Little B-Side. Oh, boy. So what I do is I take a, uh, a track that we are currently spinning, whatever the single is, mm -hmm. and then I listen to the record, 
and I pull what I believe would have been a B side Ooh. to this A side single. Because B sides aren't a thing anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody releases mm-hmm. a, a, yeah, a, yeah. a B side to an A side, right? Yeah. So you don't have yeah. the physical copy anymore, right? Yeah. yeah. So what to you guys would be the B side to Conductors Ooh. from this latest record, The Rise and the Fall? Oh God. Of our stuff? Oh yeah, or of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like off, <laughs> off our record, right? Off, like, off our record. Off the new record. Mm-hmm. What would you put if Conductors B side? Huh. I might I might go with our youth because it's like it's just a weird different vibey mm-hmm. thing that's just kind of like what like it's F- just F H F S H G would you go with something oh, like that's that nice maybe yeah. yeah like like they are like yeah do you want a contrast or do you want a pairing yeah I, I guess I, I guess was thinking that's... contrast but yeah um, really and it's it's funny because we the way that we put up the way that we structured the release I feel like. The first half of the record is very encapsulated, mm-hmm. and at the time that we recorded Conductors, all those in my mind, I'm I'm already excluding the first half of the record. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I know because I'd pick Three Sisters if you wanted like my favorite, I would put that. But yeah, because they they have a yeah. similar high energy yeah. tempo, yeah, uh, freneticness, I guess. Um, hmm. <laughs> I would, uh, you know what? I I I would probably put. Oh wow, this. I'm, I'm, I am very happy with brain. the record. Obviously, yeah, I'm, obviously. I'm happy with the record. So You're torn because like, you, you love all these songs, right? Yeah, like exactly. All of and these I'm, hold I'm, special. I'm, I'm very proud of like what we did, so I'm excited about it. Um, maybe something like Lullaby or something. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Because it like it it, That's crazy. it 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 starts it starts completely different, like slow and um, um, and sort of like I don't know, mournful. Yeah. And then it, it has a a scene change halfway through. Which could, brings it a little bit more like catharticness. So okay, I'd put it in that and go lullaby. Okay, all right. That's that's what I'll do for you guys tomorrow. Then okay. is I will I will have I'll play conductors for you, and then I'll I'll give the intro. I'll play your little clip for you, and then <laughs> okay. push that. Uh, I I just I love okay. to give. Uh, I often listen to records, and you know I hear these tracks that it's like mm-hmm. man, like they don't. They don't get enough radio attention. You know, yeah. you get the singles and people are like, oh, I love these. I love these songs. Love going to the show to sing along to these songs. But yeah. there's yeah. so like oftentimes I find that you go to the shows and you hear these other songs that you're like, man, I haven't heard this one. Like, all right, mm. I missed yeah. this one on the latest record. So I'd yeah. love to, to showcase that as much as I can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wake up. Like, it, that's the thing. Like, there's Is that one we're going to play. At the show? Yeah, we're going to play probably wake up at the show. There's, there's so many ones that were like, I'm really happy with what we what we managed to achieve with this record because we we kind of like spun our wheels for a lot of it during the pandemic Mm -hmm. and then, you know, spent time, the three of us kind of like demoing at home and honing what it is that we wanted. So we had a clear, clear vision of what we were like bringing into the studio with Gavin. And I think more so than, you know, maybe since like the first record or two, it's so clearly, you know, like our vision and focus Mm -hmm. that it really, in my mind, is kind of clear in that sense. Do you feel like having that time over the pandemic to like spin your tires and then kind of come out of that like helped you to to find that vision to have some time to sit with it? Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd say so. Just um, you know, our process just had to be different. It was forced to be different because of the pandemic. We weren't doing what we normally do, which would be to go in our like little tiny rehearsal space and just like bash things out until something made sense. Like now there was there was forced time and forced space Mm -hmm. from each other and and from the parts so everybody was kind of working on their parts individually and in a lot of ways I think that really helped us because we could hear every single thing clearly and understand what each of us wanted to say with with what we were trying to do you know how we were trying to push these songs forward how Mm -hmm. we were trying to articulate what we thought they meant all that stuff um and it's a lot of stuff it's it was clarity I think I'd say Mm -hmm. that like was we don't we didn't get when it's like when you just feel like there's pressure we have to write these songs and we have to put on a record right now and like ah let's go like there we got to really be deliberate this time mm-hmm. um and i think it helped a lot yeah and i, I think in in terms of like a one we're better for we're in a better place now than we were before like i think this will help us with writing going forward and yeah i think in terms of like communication cuz sometimes like we all we're all very with three different people which is why we create something unique that not one of us alone can kind of do. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, sometimes it's hard to articulate what you hear in your head um, to another person if their brain can't process it in that way. So just doing it and recording it and demoing it 
really helped. I feel like a song like Plague Dogs went through so many different iterations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once the thing clicked, um, I was able to assemble all of the stuff that we demoed together and be like, I think we actually have it. I just <laughs> there's this one part I have to put on it, and then we can just take this part and this part and this part. And yeah, I feel like the night that we figured that out at practice, I kind of came home, um, quite ecstatic. Stayed mm-hmm. up super late, and then sent these guys a demo the next morning on my way to work. I'm like, I think we got it. <laughs> and fortunately, we're recording in two weeks. <laughs> and like, is this this going to be like the process that you use continuing now to to write is kind of like work out each of your parts on your own and then kind of come together to collaborate on it? I think I think it's a combination. I think this is going to be one tool that definitely helps us. Mm-hmm. Because I know with other songs um, on the record, um, a song like Wake Up or Father, Son, Holy Ghost, FSHG. Um, mm-hmm. Those are ones that I feel like late in the process, kind of like I cracked it and I was able to bring something to Paul and Amy that was inspiring to them mm-hmm. and they could s- sort of see the vision behind it because it's, you know, mostly sort of like a, a, a solo. It's driven by solo acoustic guitar. And from there, they're like, yeah, we're just, we're supporting this as oppo- as opposed to like, let's sort of like, build this up to something that um, maybe needs a little bit more background support. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like, yeah, so it's, so it's, it's, it's always going to be different, but it's just realizing what we can do. Yeah. And um, yeah, just, it's all about, I feel like I was watching a documentary in the last couple of days and it was just talking about how like, Oh no, it was a trailer for uh, Bill Withers documentary and how it was talking about the rhythm section um, it's, it's job is to support the, like the, the, the voice and melody of a song. It's like, that's the center stone and it's all like supporting it like a ring. Yeah. You know, and I, I found that a really like beautiful sort of like way of describing music. Okay. And in, in touching on Plague Dogs as well, uh, you previously mentioned that Watership Down was inspiration. And in our last chat, we also kind of touched on you watching Star Wars as a kid. Mm-hmm. And having a, a Star Wars inspired song is that is um, that is that, that might have been works? that might have been I, Paul or maybe it was Star Trek. Star Trek. We have Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek. yeah, Paul is the Star Trek. Do not mix okay. it yeah, up. Yeah, Paul I, is here. You'd be so mad. At you. <laughs> He's gonna be absolutely fuming. And I think uh, the the Douglas uh, the Richard Adams book mm-hmm. um, specifically is called Plague Dogs. Plague Dogs. But yeah, okay. yeah, but Watership, Watership Down. Down. I remember watching that as a kid, which was nightmare fuel. My <laughs> my uncle was babysitting us. My dad went to the video store, the, the old Rogers video or whatever it was, and uh, picked up a very cute looking cover of, of, of animated rabbits. Of and course. Like, Here's a child. I like <laughs> rabbits. That'll be great. Absolutely, absolutely nightmare fuel. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, mm-hmm. Plague Dogs was definitely, I was reading that book um, at the start of the pandemic mm-hmm. and um, it kind of like the two things, then that where that song was starting to evolve. I think the two are kind of like, mm-hmm. mm entangled in amazing Instagram. amazing okay always a pleasure to uh, to chat with nils and yeah. amy thank you guys so us. much for this um coming back we did touch on wake up for dirty b-side mm. if we're gonna go forward with that track why do you think that would be the 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 right song to Let's go up, for okay. b-side yeah no totally. I, I yeah like like i said i think they they're all they all match together quite nicely so like i just really like that song <laughs> uh no i mean i uh, it's really uh, an emotional song. I think it's the best lyrics Nils has written ever, I'd say. Um, just um, the process of putting it together just was a really positive one all the way through. And yeah, I, I mean, I really like songs. It's hard when you're like choosing a, like a radio song. Mm-hmm. You might not. I mean, it's exactly what you said about B-sides. Like you're picking something that wouldn't be like, this is a radio single. But this song makes you, I think, feel feelings. And that's not always what your aim is with maybe a, a radio song, but this is like a feel feeling song. And it, uh, I feel it every time we play it. I think people have been enjoying it when we're playing it live. We're going to play it tonight. So yeah, I, I would go with that one for okay. sure. Okay. Okay. Um, and is there a piece of Canadiana that is referenced in that lots, song? Lots. Oh, I, I feel a lot of the song is, you know, it, it's me sort of like, um, staying up late, working, writing, you know, hanging out with my wife, during the day so there's that but one of the things like that it's the last part of the song um it was 
pandemic had ended, and uh, I've I've been I've been living in Toronto for a while. And before I moved to Toronto, my dad was sort of like, you know, you're the eldest. Can you be the executor on my will? I'm like, okay, sure. That's like it was a, a big deal. And then I've moved away, and then that, this has been like 20 years ago now. And at some point, he was like, okay, yeah, like I gotta like update the will. Are you still cool with us? I'm like, you know what? I don't live in town anymore, and my sister's probably a little bit more, you know, able to handle that stuff. And uh, he's like, okay. He's like, and well, there's also the part of but the mineral rights. I'm like, what are you, what are you even talking about? He's like, and he went to this long explanation of like, my grandfather bought some land. He parceled off to his kids. His kids with on the, within this land also own some mineral rights. And he's going to this long spiel. I'm like, I, I've never even heard about this and, and how it affects me. But I think, yeah, it was some sort of thing where it's like, I guess my grandfather owned the land and the, the rights underneath it. He's like, eh, you know, you, there might be some money. There might not be. Who knows? Whatever. I'm like, yeah, let, let Heather, let my sister deal with it. Mm-hmm. But that always stuck with me. I'm like, <clears throat> so that's one of the, one of the lines in there. Um, okay. Uh, talking about mineral rights. Okay. Um, yeah. Fossilize our bones. Yeah. We'll do, like, it's something about like passing away the fossilizer bones mm-hmm. and uh, the harvest our bones for pennies on my dad's mineral rights. <laughs> and it was like when, nice. when that sort of came up in my brain, I was like, I was actually doing this at work. Sitting at the computer, I'm like, I got I to gotta get this stuff done. And, and it's sort of like, oh, yeah, something just really connected with me. And that was the sort of like, that was one of the first, I guess I did it in a reverse way, but that was one of the things where things started to like click fast with that song with the lyrics. So, okay. All right. Okay. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Best of luck with the show tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I believe the show is sold out. I think it, it is. is. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, if you want to catch Rural Alberta Advantage on this tour, sorry, you're going to have to uh, mosey on, find Aww. them uh, find them on down the road. Well, um, <laughs> well, keep Sad. an eye. There, may, there, there is a chance that maybe some tickets might get released. I don't want to say anything, but usually sometimes if the venue doesn't use up all the tickets that they've held and we haven't used up all our guest lists, there's a chance. But okay. it's like it's... Oh, boy. Giving we'll up see. inside inside secrets. <laughs> of just, the just industry. Keep, keep, industry keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. But like, I can't make any secrets, promises, but hopefully. Last, last minute, if you're looking for tickets for Rural Alberta Advantage, they they might come available. And obviously, be sure to uh, check out the uh, the new record, The Rise and the Fall. It's out now. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers, guys.